it's Ashley with At Home with Ashley and today I'm going to do a project I've always wanted to do which is turn a regular pegboard into a work of art with cross stitch yarn. It's going to be fun. Let me show you what I'm up to. For supplies I got a sheet of pegboard and this comes in 8 foot by 4 foot. They're smaller size also and then I got this trim that will cap the edges and we trimmed it in the store so we got the right lengths and I also bought a ton of yarn like a lot. To make the pegboard, what we first did was draw one line and I'm cutting down to four feet by five and a half feet. And so we just used a circular saw on that line to cut the pegboard into two smaller pieces because eight feet is just too tall, but I'm still going really tall. I'm excited to show you because it's gonna be a big look. For this project, the main supply you're gonna need is yarn. And I decided to buy a variety of different weights and textures and I just thought I would add some interest to the overall picture. One thing I would caution is this size and this size is about as big as will fit through the pegboard holes any thicker and they just won't go through. So keep that in mind when buying yarn that you can buy nice thick chunky ones but don't get too chunky or it just won't work. Start by finding a picture to create the cross stitch pattern off of. After looking at a lot of examples on Pinterest, I personally favor the look of floral giant cross stitch art, especially roses. I decided to do tulips though, so I bought clip art on Etsy for botanical tulips that I thought was really pretty. Then I just uploaded it onto the free website Floss Cross, and they make a custom cross stitch pattern. Again, you don't have to pay anything. You can only do three different patterns before you have to delete one, but I found that perfect. You choose how big your canvas is. Pegboard comes in four foot by eight foot or four foot by four foot pieces with holes every one inch. Before you make your pattern, you need to know what size of pegboard you're gonna be using. My pegboard is gonna be four feet by five foot six inches or 48 inches by 66 inches. On the Floss, Floss Cross website, um, they're going to ask what size you want your canvas to be. So for the pattern, one square will be one inch, and on the chart I put a width of 48 inches, and the chart height I did 66 inches. On normal cross stitch, this will be this would be like the tiny little squares, but it works perfect that one inch is one square for the Floss Cross website. You can use the same method to create your own pattern, or you can upload yours on my website. Once I figured out my pattern, I printed it out. This is what it looked like, and you can download this for free on my blog. I will include the link in the bio. Um, and it comes with three pages just for free off that Crossfloss website. And you can make your own, absolutely. I'd kind of suggest that. If you want to use mine just to be simple, you can. Um, this is a very important page. So it tells you where, where each color goes with kind of a symbol, which is very helpful. And then it corresponds to the third and final page, which I've kind of like messed up, but you can still see it good enough. So say right here is this like dark green with two squigglies. Oh, that's that one. Um, black. And I'm actually, I cut out all black because there was only like five and I didn't want it. Anyway, okay. <laughs> So say we have this one, it's like an L with a green. So that is gonna be that moss green. So I went to the store, I picked out yarn that corresponded to these colors and then once I was home, I cut off a little piece of it and taped it to where it went so that I could easily be like, okay, I need to do this L, it's this green. And that was very helpful. I referenced these the whole time I am making my cross stitch pattern. I didn't really reference this. Um, but if you, I would definitely suggest printing these out as making this project. I don't have a printer at home. I just sent it to FedEx and it was absolutely worth my time to upload it, send it over. I mean, you don't really have to upload it because you made it on your computer. So that is very important to have your pattern. This is how you're going to get started and then tape your yarn that you're using to the paper. I would suggest going at once to the store and buying all your pieces. I kind of ordered some online and bought some in store and I regretted that because I bought some that was too big. Anyway, so just go to the store once, buy a bunch of yarn. I did, I ended up doing, I think 23 colors. So that's all of these and now we can put them on the board. Before I put any yarn on the pegboard, I marked the grid. So on the edges, every 10 dots, I marked a little line with the marker, and then I went back with like little post-it flags so that I could easily see what part of the pegboard I was working with. I also marked center on the top on each side. Once the pegboard is cut, clean the pegboard. Even if no cuts remain, pegboards have all those holes in them, and they have brown dust from being made. 
nobody has cleaned them before. They made the holes, they put them on the shelves. So that means they slowly drop little like brown dots and they create a mess. It also can get into your yarn and make it so the yarn is kind of messy as you do your thing, as you stitch it. So use a vacuum to clean off the board. The first tip I'm gonna give you if you're gonna make this cross stitch pegboard is to use a yarn needle. Um, I was hesitant to use one. At first, all I did was I just shoved it through the hole. That was very hard. <laughs> Second, I put tape on the end and that was relatively easier. Um, but then I was at the craft store to get more yarn and I bought two of these for $3, very affordable. And it just makes it so you can easily push um, through the hole and find your way. I'm doing a terrible job illustrating this, but find your way through the hole. So you can just see it goes super easy and then you have something to hold on to that's nice and steady. So that is nice. One of my concerns was how hard is it going to be to thread the needle, but because you buy a special one for yarn, it's nice and thick and it's not hard at all to thread the needle. Um, I'm going to show you the second tip I have, which is to go in one hole through another hole and then pull the whole thing because what you could do, I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit. Um, what you could do is push it through the hole. We're gonna go right to this one, pull it all the way. Cause I like to use long string that saves time and then keep pulling it all the way four times, but that's gonna double your time of making this. And this is already a very long, slow project. So keep it, like do anything you can to make it more efficient. And I found going through one hole, going through the second hole and pulling once for both of those holes was the quickest way to do it. Here is a time lapse of me putting on all the yarn and the different colors and the correct spots. It's pretty satisfying to watch. And as we go, I'll kind of give you more tips on how I figured out how to do this as fast as possible. this pegboard the quickest way I figured out to do is to find where one goes and then work off the chart you have and go to the next one so I like to work in one section do one color at a time then move to the next section and so as you can see on my chart um, the ones I've already done are like the circles and so now I know where the circles are so I'm just gonna work off those and figure out where these yellow um, clover one goes so I've decided it's easiest to use a marker. I'm just using like my son's Crayola markers and mark um, where they need to go. So I'm working one color at a time. All the yellows will be right now. And I can say, okay, so this is this set of four right here. So this is my next one. I'm doing three right here. And I'm going, I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six. This way, one, two, three, four, five, six right here this one goes here so I'll mark all of these with the marker that'll take a few minutes and then I will go back with the string and put it in that'll take the majority of the time but if you just do one string at a time and then you have to reference back to this it takes an even longer time um, and then say you accidentally put this in the wrong spot um, you can get a rag wet or your finger wet and it just comes off. So that's really nice. So if you can still see the circle, um, like where the, the string doesn't quite cover the circle, like you can see that one, you can just get it wet and it'll come right off. And then you can't tell that you marked out your path first. So definitely mark out your path, then do the string to, um, to cover those up. And then once you've you're done with that color, move to the next color, the next one that touches this. And that'll keep your pattern from going off because there can be a lot of counting with this. And it's easiest, in my opinion, to just work off of, um, get one color correct and then work off of that. So now we're, that we marked where all the yellow thread is going to do go, all right, I'm going to get it off the skein of yarn. We will thread it. And this is the thickest yarn I have, so it's kind of the trickiest, but not that tricky. Um, I'm trying to guess how much I need. 
So I kind of just eyeball it. I'd rather have too much than not enough because stringing the thread takes the longest amount of time. So I'm just going to say that's good. Cut off the end. And then I'm going to start putting this on the pegboard. I like to work from the top to the bottom. So right now I have the pegboard leaning against my fireplace. So I still have space for my arm to get in the back. So I'm going through the first hole and then back through it. And I'm going to pull it just enough so that I have a tail on the back. And then I'm gonna put a knot on the back. Okay, it's a little bit tricky to show the back where I'm doing the knot, but it's not actually. If you can tie your shoes, you can tie a knot on the back of the pegboard. So an X, tighten that. It's a little tricky because I'm trying to make it so the camera can see. And then another X. So I'm just double knotting it and tying it tight. And then the first strand is secured and you can pull from there. So now that my string is secured, I'm going to continue making the X's from the top to the bottom. I like to work top to, bo to bottom just to be as efficient as possible. And like you saw, I did a huge long string of yarn. Um, at first, I would make one X, knot it off, and then do the next one. It took so long. It was a huge waste of time. So I definitely suggest doing a bunch at a time. And you're going to knot it at the beginning and at the end, and then it'll be nice and secure. The only tricky thing is if you figure out you made a mistake in the middle, um, cutting them out, you could, you would ruin, like, it, it wouldn't be secure. So I would just suggest um, using tape to secure it in the middle, if that makes sense, if you end up messing up. Or you can just not mess up. That'll be easier. Um, so you can see, like, the majority of this project is just marking where you're, where you're going to be stringing the thread and then just going and threading over it. And um, I've tried to get as fast as I can at this and it still takes me, you know, 30 seconds to a minute per, per um, X to make them. And I am doing a big pegboard. My pegboard is four feet by five feet. And so I have about 1700 to make. So it's a little slow, but it's a good project to do while you're watching TV. And it's actually kind of relaxing to do because it's really monotonous. Your brain does not need to be focused on putting the needle through and pulling it. So that's a nice benefit. decided that drawing out a bunch of these at once is the most time efficient. It takes a long time to get this correct. And then I could just sit there and stitch. I like to put on music and it goes a lot faster, I think. I also thought I would show you the back. It's kind of a mess. I have a bunch of strings hanging. Those are extras for the other side, but it's coming along nicely. To frame the pegboard, which really finishes it off, we just cut the wood trim on a 45 degree angle and we cut it the same size as all four sides of the pegboard. Here it is resting on the top of the pegboard so you can kind of see. Um, and then I painted it a nice lavender color so that it would look nice and finished and I used construction adhesive to adhere the frame to the pegboard. Besides the construction adhesive, we also used screws and teeny tiny ones and screwed the back on like the pegboard onto the frame. All of the stitching is done. Look how beautiful this is. Like laying down, you kind of get a better feel for all that texture. It's really beautiful. To hang the pegboard on the wall, all we did was use a screw in each corner and screw it directly onto the wall. Pegboard is so thin, it'd be hard to hang it any other way. For the corner where we hung this, we did it with a screw and that's not like super good looking. So I just have these decorative balls with glue dots on the back and I think that will look nice. And here is the finished pegboard, cross stitch, giant art. I'm gonna get up close so you can see some of the really pretty texture. From far away you can see the tulips, I think it looks really nice.